I'm going to do what I call my fantasy analysis of Brahms' famous and beloved intermezzo in A, uh, Opus 118, number 2. Um, I call it a fantasy analysis because it's really my own take on, on supplying a narrative to the, to the music. Because for me what's really important when we're performing is that we try and get underneath the skin of the music uh, so that we're not thinking about, right, now I'm going to put my fourth finger on an A uh, and, and um, move my elbow a little bit to the left and then I'm putting my pedal down. Those are the sorts of things we worry about in the practice. But in the performance we have to let all of that go and focus on the communication, what it is we're trying to say about the music, which is what? Feelings, uh, ideas, uh, colours, some people think in colours or see music in colours, but also the imagination which can often get really neglected in piano teaching and in piano practice um, because we really need it in the performance. So some of it has to do with background, a little bit of research. Now if I'm, I'm going to be reading from my iPad here, um, this piece has to do with Brahms's connection with Clara Schumann. And we have to look back into the history of, of their relationship, starting with Brahms's visit to the Schumann household in 1853. I'm going to make sure I get my dates right because I'm not very good with dates. 1853, Brahms goes along to the Schumann's household in order to study with Johannes, uh, uh, sorry, Robert, Robert Schumann. Um, and uh, whether it's a formal study or whether it's a mentorship or whether it's just a kind of introduction, uh, let's let's meet. But anyway, he ended up staying there. Um, Clara and, and Robert were very happily married and loads of kids and she had a career, a busy career as a concert pianist. But they became very connected uh, to each other in a very healthy way, you know, at that point. And it was very soon afterwards that Robert was taken ill and ended up in the sanitarium where he was forbidden to see his wife, or maybe it was the other way around. I think the, the directors or the, the doctors felt it would be bad for um, Robert to, to see Clara and then had to have to say goodbye to her again at the end of the day. So the decision was made that they couldn't see each other, which would have been terrible for both of them. Um, Brahms was there for Clara during this time of difficulty. He was living in the house upstairs and he was like... Um, she would have been, I guess, like a mother figure to him. He would have been a confidant to her. Uh, they had a series of letters that were published at one point, and it seemed to be out of print now. Letters that were written over many years, over their whole relationship, the whole lifetime. This is from Clara um, talking about Johannes Brahms, um, presumably after Robert had been committed to the sanitarium. He came like a true friend to share all my sorrow. He strengthened the heart that threatened to break. He uplifted my mind. He cheered my spirit when and wherever he could. In short, he was my friend in the fullest sense of the word. And Brahms himself writing in 1854, around this time, to Clara in a letter, uh, I would gladly write to you only by means of music. But I have things to say to you today which music could not express. It's very interesting because I feel that what he's really doing in this piece is writing a love letter to Clara. He dedicated this piece to her when they were both in their old age. She was an old lady who was no longer playing in public. Um, then, he, then he goes on to write another letter, Brahms to Clara, May 31st, 1856, again around this time. I wish I could write to you as tenderly as I love you and tell you all the good things that I wish you. I mean, isn't that a wonderful, tender sentiment to, to express? You are so infinitely dear to me. So this is the kind of beginning of their love story. It would be a kind of wrong way of saying it, but, but it was, it was a love story. He was very connected to her, she was very connected to him. They never married. When Robert died, they could have got married, but they didn't. Whether this was to do with, with Clara's 
probably that the, the times, the, the, the morals of the mores of the times were, you know, once you've been married and you've had a wonderful marriage like they did have and a happy marriage, you wouldn't then get married to somebody else, unlike today where, where one might. Maybe, that, maybe there's that uh, part of it. But they were lifelong friends and lifelong, more than friends, uh, dear friends, very, very close friends, intimate friends. Now, Opus 118 um, was dedicated to Clara. It was Brahms's penultimate piano work, written in 1893. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you my fantasy analysis based on that backstory, which I think is gives, gives lots of, um, you know, there's lots to take away for the imagination in that story, you know, filling in the gaps, trying to put yourself in the, in the picture there and see exactly what that was about. So let me now proceed to my fantasy analysis of the piece. <laughs> 